Next up, we have Luis. Luis is uh, going to talk about security alert orchestration. Security. <laughs> so if everybody turns and looks at the back of the room, it'd probably be more comfortable for me. <laughs> awesome. All right, so who am I? Uh, I'm some old Intel guy and eventually moved here in 2013 and joined the civilian sector. I worked at, uh, in some capacity with the DOD or other for about 22 years. Um, did some time at US Cybercom, kind of hanged out in a big forensics lab down there. Um, and then it kind of moved into the tech field where I've been in a financial and a startup. So, um, and they're really different, um, but a lot the same. They're all worried about the same things, but they're very different in the way they work. Um, I know that we're like broadcasting this, I think, on YouTube. So I just wanted to remind everybody, I'm not the actor, Luis Guzman. Okay, please don't confuse me. All right. Uh, so, what should we expect from this talk? So. I'm not going to show you lines of code. I'm not going to give you a live demo. I have no magic tricks. Maybe one or two, but I don't plan on using them. And primarily going to talk about what, uh, uh, like a case for automation, uh, and then remind everybody still about the humans. So you'll kind of see that through all this. Uh, and I don't believe the bots are going to rise up and take over all our jobs. Right? We still have a place here, like kind of figuring out how that will function. And by the way, if I'm going too slow or too fast, or you're just bored, um, uh, tomatoes are better than corn. <laughs> All right, so why security automation? Well, I, I, I don't know about everybody. Oh, I forgot to ask this. Um, how many of you are managers in the room? Manage people. How many of you are analysts? And how many of you are engineers? So I'm going to super wave top this, but we can go on either three of those things and talk about them because I kind of, like we were just talking about, have been all over the place and kind of want to talk about that and hopefully get some participation, right? So evolving environments, increased security information, uneven skill sets in your teams. This is what every manager I think sees, right? Like uh, it's a lot of great information, super coming fast. Everybody's kind of changing what they're doing. There's new something else in the middle of the week. Uh, and all of our team members are not completely trained to the same level, uh, understand the networks the same, <coughs> and it's very difficult, right? And so part of the case that, that hopefully we'll talk about today is what are we really trying to do here? Uh, and then how do we kind of unify that in a way that we can kind of move forward? So I got three slides. So this is the obligatory, the bad guys are coming slide, right? And I hear this all the time that um, you know, hackers only have to be right once, right? Which is kind of true, but it's kind of also like against the principles of defense, right? Like, I mean, if you look at combat through the centuries, it's been like 5,000 years we've been talking about it, that it's just like three to one attacker to defender ratio, right? So if that's the case, why is this hard? I mean, we own the house, right? We should know our own networks. The attackers have to discover a vulnerability, exploit, and info, infiltrate and exfiltrate. I should have thrown that up there. They have no idea what our defensive posture is, or should not know any idea what our defensive posture is. Why is this hard? Anybody? Why did the insider threat? Say again? The insider threat. On the insider threat, right? Like, I mean, you know, I think the Verizon report said like 18% of attacks last year were insiders. Which Culture. Culture, what do you mean by that? It's a huge thing, man. I guess I give you a number. We're Americans. <laughs> Culture within the IT community in general, you got what I've always known as the lazy sys admin syndrome. Okay. Um, as well as on the business side of the house, uh, you know, the mindset of IT isn't important. It is still very I concur. I mean, I'm just saying, just the way the internet connected grow. I mean, you wouldn't expect somebody to drive up the building downtown Pittsburgh with an Eastern European tank and drive through the door. 
because they're not here, but with everything interconnected, um, the same kind of people can just get in through your network. And, you know, it's just one of those things where they can hit as many different people as they want. I mean, which they fail a lot of times. The few they do hit, because they have so many ways of getting to different places to attack, um, <coughs> they can succeed. Okay. I don't disagree. The attackers don't have to worry if they break something. They don't, what? They don't have to worry if they break something. Sure. We have to worry about breaking it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, some, some houses don't have walls. Or in other so, words, you so, could just, yeah. I, I worked for a startup recently, and we actually had our internal um, our internal domain uh, lottable on the internet. It was actually announced. <laughs> Freaked me out, man. <laughs> Companies don't generate revenue by bugging their systems. Oh, that's a super good one, right? And it, it kind, of, kind of goes to what you were talking about here. It's not only that they don't generate revenue, but IT is to draw on most companies, doubly so if you're securing it. Wow, so my talk's over. <laughs> uh, I don't really have an answer to this generally, but, but looking at it from my point of view, the thing that I can't control is the problem of noise versus signal. Right? Does anybody know what I mean by that? Engineers in the room should be like, yeah. Noise versus signal. Right? Anybody want to give a layman's term to this? Or, or is it so simple I shouldn't even bother? Okay, I'll do it. Um, this is hard to know what you're looking for. This is really easy, right? Noise or interference within your signal is a problem. Right? It's doubly so a problem if you're if you're the person that just you know kind of <clears throat> self trained themselves and and are seeing an alert for the first time, right? And you're really super smart, right? So you're going to run it through a thousand sandboxes. You're going to check seventeen reputation sites, and you're going to Work for 50 minutes to two hours to try to figure out what just happened with that alert. And then you're going to go, shit, i got to examine the person now. Right? So you're going to spend all that time looking at the person, and then you're going to spend all your time looking at the network, and then you're going to go for hours and hours and hours until the IT guy next to you says, hey, I was just updating this. That's the alert you just saw. Right? So th this is what I think is the biggest problem in Kind of talk a little bit about this, right? So what's what's raw raw performance, and, and I'm probably not even going to talk to those bullets. The biggest part of this is, is that it's not only about technology, but it's also about repeatable procedures and training people to be able to handle them, right? So even if we talk about alert automation, what we're really talking about is capturing the science in your brain into a way that's repeatable by that guy. And it's augmented through technology, right? That's what we're really talking about. Right? It's like the idea of computer vision where you can like see <coughs> a, a, an imagery and a computer has a really difficult time seeing a satellite on a piece of imagery. You know who can see a satellite on a piece of imagery really well? This guy, right? You can too, right? Computer struggles a little bit. But if they could sift out all the potentials, they just cut your setting in a tenth by order of magnitude. And so it's really on how do we look at the information we need and pull that information together, right? And what I've seen, in, at least in my two places that I've been to, four, five, ten, thousand places, I think, is that there's a lot of information there. Everybody knows exactly what's going on in our system, right? But we're fumbling around trying to understand that, and we've taken the advantage of owning the terrain away from us. And we own it, right? We should know exactly what's on it. You should know what networks are out there. We have more freedom of under of movement to look what's inside of our networks than somebody who just got there. Right? They have no clue what they're going to trigger off or break, which should let us know what's going on. Right? All right. And then um, <coughs> you see, uh, sorry, and there's a lack of, com uh, of com collaboration between teams and way over dependency on the one smart person that understands all the systems, right? And that person has an advantage, right? Because they have job security. I've seen this way too many times, right? You walk in, your senior intrusion detection analyst knows everything, and no one knows nothing but them, right? Because there's no information sharing, no, no, no information uh, uh, sharing or training. 
<clears throat> All right, so, I mean, in my last organization and the one before that, I really concentrated on developing shared, <coughs> shared knowledge bases. You know, sharing information between us, training programs for the individuals, right? Getting shared information sets between us and the IT guys, the lazy sysadmins. I don't know if they're lazy, right? Or well, particularly on the dev side, too, what, what, what we see. I would tell you generally, they are moving at a different speed than you are. Right? I didn't necessarily mean that the person themselves is lazy. It could, it could be that the person's lazy, but it could also be, you know, they aren't just <coughs> overwhelmed. Yep. Too much. What I've seen also is consistency, right? They just want a consistent process because they are also trying to automate their knowledge, right? And they're afraid to share those processes because they built it on their laptop and they didn't put it to a central info at all. <laughs> so I, I've seen that a lot. And on the dev sides, where, <coughs> hey, I'm just trying to get my job done, and every security hard along the way is a problem. Uh, so, um, one of the things that, that, that I focused on on the other side to get to this middle layer where we got moderate signal is to develop an, a common security event logging. What do I mean by that? Does anybody have an idea? It's not just Seth, right? But if you're in like a place that's a startup and they don't have a logging stuff, <coughs> right? That's a problem, right? Or one lot, set of logs record MAC addresses and the other set of logs record IP addresses and neither of them record <coughs> user sessions. How do you kind of marry those two ideas, right? So one of the things that I looked at to develop in this monitor signal is to enrich that data or to decorate the information going in so that it can make those connections quickly between different uh, value switches. All right, and then at the highest level is this concept of automation or enrichment then automation. <laughs> where um, what I've seen is you can change by order of magnitudes the amount of information that is being presented to your analyst or your engineer to make a decision on, right? Or you can feed, get information from your environment in order to support your analytical process. So a couple examples, anybody do this already? <coughs> So one of the things that we used to do with my last corporation is, is that we would send an email when we saw certain bash lines being run within our environment, right? And it was an email to the, to the person that ran it and said, hey, did you really intend to do that, right? At Slack, which is another sister company, they would send a Slack over to the individual and ask them, hey, did you intend to run that command? Right? But it's this concept of pulling information and then pushing it in front of the person who has to make the decision, right? And being able to use that information to maybe auto-close or auto-remediate <laughs> potential problems. Right? All right, fun. This is an example. On site binary detonated in user's temporary directory. If you were the analyst or the engineering person answering to this, what would you want to know? Anyone? Snoring is not allowed. File. Say again? File name. File name. Awesome. So file attributes. Where it came from. Where it came from. How did it get into our environment vector? What? The user. Who it is. What awesome. Work for Information it. about the user. Where they, what do they have? What else? Who do they work for the department? Permissions that they may have. Awesome. Say again? What else is happening on? Great. What's happening on the system itself or perhaps within your network, right? Anything else? File yeah. type. I'm sorry? The file type. Awesome. So everything about the binary file type, reputation maybe. We already have past data of what it is. Cool. Yeah. Uh, reputation from or either derived or, or looked up at the time. How about history? How many times does this binary explode in your environment? How many times did the guy or the gal who owns that machine get infected over the last six months? How many incidents have a similar profile to what you're looking at? How many create how many create how many binaries that exploded in your organization had a secondary call out to another unknown domain for full reputation? Okay. 
So I would tell you that when when like I first started doing all of this, those were manual steps, man. <laughs> okay. I literally would have to upload it into Virus Total or upload it into my my Cuckoo sandbox, get the results, do reputation scans against all of the Intel sources I had. Try to figure out how it got into my environment, probably by pulling memory off the machine itself or pulling the machine. Okay. So the argument is, is that we could do this through automation in, in with, without a problem, right? The question is, is are you willing to get that information all in one place, and do you have the latitude to be able to do that? Okay. And I'll kind of talk to an example. This is a really good one because this is an example that happened in my environment all the time, right? I just mentioned the, the last environment I was in. Internal routable on the internet, right? Machine management, whatever that means, right? High level of rights for individual users because we were a high technology shop. Pretty much touch everything. Now, there's some other goodnesses about it. For example, that uh, we had machine level search, so you couldn't talk to the environment without uh, doing a machine on the chain, and everything was two factor, right? So, super awesome. We spent a lot of time looking at the APIs. And most business processes went through our APIs, plus we're secure to put entry into our mail. Right, so good stuff, but it still took a lot of coordination to get all that information together. Right? So this is what I've seen, right? Take me hours when I first started, or when most people first start, to just go through and look at a potential incident. And how many of you just don't know what it is, so label it a false positive? Let's be honest. Right? How, how often do you think your junior analysts or people starting your field do this? Right? You can't see anything bad. All the reputations are bleh. You know? So what I've seen is, is that it's taken, I've seen this happen, that particular alert, take upwards of six hours to run. Right? With over half of them being false positive. Any of you guys hardcore desktop side, endpoint side? Yeah. There's a lot of programs out there that, that detonate in, one, in a user temporary directory that unfortunately are unsigned and can't open again. A lot. Unfortunately, way more than they should be. Right? Well, that's because it's a, a kind of a gateway in when you have all kinds of restrictions on what you can install and you can install. I mean, I, I mean, I know when I was um, working in Northern Virginia, there's a whole federal agency that installed an entire suite of programs in the temporary directory because that's the only way they could get it up fast enough to run it with the right. Engine. right. So if you have a preclusion in your environment, I think what we're getting at is is that understanding the procedures within your environment, understanding how your environment functions and the technologies and what's allowed and not allowed, is super important, right? And if you can eliminate those things or understand like some of the systems that you're using. Like I, I've worked with a bunch of engineers, this happened constantly. Fired off temporary directory constantly. Right? How do we distinguish them? Well, we went back to these things and delivered that information at time of detonation with the initial alert to the person that was examining it. Right? So calls out to reputation sites on hashes went automatic, automatically. Okay. Lookups in our SEM went programmatically. Right? So the hash, the individual, right, the machine name, all looked up in our SEM and returned back results programmatically. Right? If it met a certain threshold, for example, wasn't sitting on a on a whitelist, established on reputable um, net cons, net connections outward, or went to a known potential secondary download site, system was programmatically contained. Right? I think that's the only way that you can attack these type of problems at scale. Right? Is that it's a trick of decreasing the amount of time it takes you to execute any of these tasks. Right? Now isn't that what enterprise security is supposed to be? Like when you go to a get a suite from people, isn't that what they're supposed to do for you, right? Go to a large organization and they give it to you all in one package. If you buy all their suites, put it all together, it should work magically like this, right? 
how many companies that in the room, how many people have one type of enterprise security suite throughout their entire environment? Why? Because we supposedly buy best of breed, or the business pushes us to buy cheapest at cost, one or the other, right? So you have to be able to synchronize all of this information together. Right? And, uh, and I'll talk to you an example or some discussions about how we did it, right? So at the last environment I was in, we had nothing. We put up our SEM, created a security logging layer, put canaries both out on our environment and also looked at canaries within our logging systems, right? So sending log alerts so we knew what the hell was happening, right? Did that, did that bro box in the corner actually ever see anything? But we were forced to to go respond to us by sending something to it. Or our actual canaries, black box canaries within our environment, we would touch them, right? <coughs> to see what happened. Then we established a set of common metrics, which I just described earlier, right? Then we put in an automation platform, integrated our chat platform into this, and created a shared knowledge base. So all signatures were written into a shared knowledge base, right? We had an automated process that was integrated with our chat platform, right? And so while we were hunting within our chat platform, has anybody seen this before, by the way? If you're really interested, there's something called Security Bot. You can just download it and try it at home, right? But as we went through our processes, we were able to then dump that information into our centralized uh, uh, automation platform, which effectively was our signature device, right? And then, we had a common incident procedure throughout the organization, right? So we fell in on the organization's incident procedure and started molding ours to that. And I will happen to say the stuff at the top is, is stuff that we were working on when we left, right? And then establish auto closure or auto containment procedure. And when I say auto closure, it doesn't mean that we never looked at it again. It just meant that those alerts were pushed off of the pressing right now look at. And instead we would look at them I was about to go to. Thanks. Right? So, in general, <coughs> we saw that level of drop. So, the 10,000 was the number of alerts that we had over a, uh, <coughs> a quarter period, <coughs> right? And then we were able to push that down to approximately 5,000 alerts that required manual intervention, right? And then once we started putting in all of these other pieces, where we were able to really finely tune our signatures we were able to drop the amount of alerts that we were dealing with to about 500, which then were true incidents, right? We had high signal, right? Not 100%, right? But we still had issues. And there were other integrations that we had, like integrating our hacker walking reporter and integrating you know, uh, our internal pen testing and then eventually our purple TV. But in general, we dramatically decreased the number of All right, now I went through those super fast because I didn't want to read bullets, but would love to talk about this. I mean, can somebody give me an example of automation that's happening within your environment? 